It's 11 p.m. on a Friday evening, and I sign off our newscast. Good night, New Mexico. Thank you for watching. I hope you have a great weekend. 30 minutes later, I'm sitting in the, my car in the driveway of my own home, and I'm holding so tightly onto the steering wheel. I can't get out of my car. I'm terrified. I believe one of two things will happen if I get out of my car. One, I'll go into my house and find my husband and my baby girl, six months old, Monroe, dead. Or I believe if I get out of my car, someone will jump out of the bushes and kill me. Thoughts like this kept happening. I went back to work after a short maternity leave. My husband decided to stay home with our baby girl. He's a stay-at-home dad, and he's so good at it. And he would spend a lot of the day running errands with my daughter, and I worried about them being in the car so much. I would ask him to let me know when they left and when they got somewhere. And my husband loves Costco. <laughs> I think it's the $1 hot dogs or the free hors d'oeuvres, but he loves it. <laughs> Sounds like a lot of you do, too. <laughs> so I'm sitting at my desk at work, and I get that text from my husband, hey, babe, we're heading to Costco. <laughs> As the minutes passed, I'm sitting at my desk, and my heart felt like it was clenching into a fist, and I couldn't breathe. I was imagining every single intersection that they would travel through to get to the store, and in my mind, in very vivid detail, I was replaying over and over again someone crashing into them, and in one moment, taking away everything that I love. I pulled up Google Maps. I thought, if I could just find a safer way for them to get home, everything would be okay. All of this because of a trip to the grocery store. It got worse. I wasn't really sleeping at night. I worried that our daughter's bedroom window wasn't locked because I was scared someone would jump in, break in, and take her. I thought at night, well, maybe we should move her bedroom from the front of the house to the back because I was terrified someone might drive by our home and start shooting into our house, and one of those bullets would go through the glass and into her crib. What I find interesting about this time in my life is this is what people saw. That is not how I was feeling inside. I had a coworker come up to me once in our newsroom, a really sweet guy, and he said, Royal, motherhood looks so good on you. You have this great career, this beautiful family, you have it figured out. And as he walked off, I felt my soul reaching out to him, and my soul was screaming silently from the inside, I'm not okay. I don't have it figured out, and I am so scared all the time, and I don't understand why. Over meatloaf and mashed potatoes one night at dinner with my husband, it was an average night for us, but not so average in a lot of ways. I told him everything, and I hung my head so low because I was embarrassed and I was ashamed. What kind of mom has these kind of thoughts in her mind about her own baby? And my husband looked at me, he was a little surprised. I think he knew that I worried a lot, but he had no idea about the dark things that were going on in my mind every minute of every single day. I remember one sentence so clearly from that conversation. I looked at him and I said, I can't live my life like this. And he hugged me. He said, we're fine, we'll figure it out. Let's go talk to Mark. And Mark is a family therapist. A few days later, we were sitting on Mark's couch together, and I was telling Mark everything that I was worrying about. 
I remember he had this crease in his forehead. He had his hand on his chin. He was listening to me so intently. And I was worried what he was going to say when I was done talking. I was worried about what he was thinking of me as a mother. And after I was done, he looked at me and he said, Royal, you're going through postpartum anxiety, and it's something a lot of mothers go through. I exhaled and I cried. I felt like I hadn't exhaled in months. Whatever I was feeling, it had a name. Postpartum anxiety is a mood disorder that affects women after giving birth. The primary symptoms include intense worries, fears, and anxiousness that begins to severely disrupt your life. Postpartum anxiety is often called postpartum depression's little cousin. They're related in some ways, but they're different too. The author of The Hormone Cure, I think she does a really good job of distinguishing between the two. She writes, I think of postpartum anxiety as the loss of the normal sense of balance and calm and postpartum depression as the loss of heart. My therapist suggested meditation. I'd never tried it before. But I started doing short meditations during the day as soon as I started feeling anxious, and it helped a lot. And you know what else helped a lot? Was talking about it out loud. I didn't have this secret to hide anymore. I work for a television news station, and I volunteered to do this online documentary about what I was going through. It was me sitting in front of a camera, just talking about all my fears and anxieties. And I definitely had that moment before it was posted online. I wondered, oh my goodness, is this a good idea? <sighs> I didn't know what my boss would say. I didn't know how my coworkers would look at me. I didn't know how my community would react. But this really beautiful thing happened as soon as it was posted online. I had moms writing to me, calling me, stopping me in the grocery store, sometimes with tears in their eyes, saying, thank you for talking about this. I'm going through something similar, and I didn't understand it, and now I do a little bit more. Thank you. I had men writing to me, too, husbands, fathers, and dads. They had a woman in their life who was struggling. They wanted to help so badly, and they didn't know how. And they saw my video, they shared it with their loved one, and it started a conversation. And tonight, I invite all of you to join me in this conversation. If you're a mother in any stage of your journey, and you're starting to experience this type of anxiousness, talk to your pediatrician, your OBGYN, a therapist, these are trained medical professionals who are so good at what they do, and they want to help you. Or talk to a loved one, your husband, your wife, your partner, the mom who sits next to you at work, a friend. And if you're that person an anxious mom confides in, the best advice that I can give to you is to listen. Really listen. Sometimes it's not just new mom jitters or the baby blues. Sometimes it can be a lot more than that. This is my family. That's my daughter, Monroe. She's two and a half. That's my son, Brooks. He's one, and that is my husband, Chad. The day that I started talking about this was the day that I chose me. And by choosing me, I was choosing them too. I got out of my car that night after sitting in there for about an hour, and I rushed into our home, and I ran to our bedroom. There was some light shining in onto our bed, and I saw my husband there. He was asleep. And next to him, in her crib, was my beautiful Monroe. She was swaddled in a lavender blanket. She was asleep. 
and her cheeks were perfectly pink. And I walked up a little bit closer to her crib and I leaned in and I watched her breathe up and breathe down and breathe up and breathe down. She was safe. She was okay. And these days, I'm okay too. I still, thank you. I still get anxious every now and then. I don't know if this anxiety will ever go away. I've talked to a lot of moms tonight, and it sounds like it doesn't really. (laughs) But when I'm feeling anxious now, it is different. I have the tools, I have the understanding, I have the awareness to recognize what is happening, and I can better handle it. So, by the time this guy arrived, round two for us, all nine and a half pounds of him, (laughs) yeah, big kid, I did not spend the first few months of his life worrying about what could happen to him. I just loved him. I loved his fat little baby rolls and the dimple on his cheek. I was living in the moment when he had his first smile and his first laugh. I was present. I was connected. All because I had the courage to ask for help. (laughs) 